Hello class. We are uh, at chapter two and it's going to be about uh, the significance and frequent diseases. So it's good stuff. It's uh, many people, they look for the zebras. They look for the uh, unusual things that you learn, the diseases that are pretty rare. But probability says you should look at uh, the most frequent diseases first and then if you have evidence of uh, something else, then you can go that, that direction. All right. Okay, so it's um, a relatively short lecture, but it has um, a lot of data I collected to uh, look at um, frequent causes of, of both mortality and morbidity, which is gonna be diseases that are killing you, but you're showing um, effects of them. So we'll get to causes of death, and that varies quite a bit depending on a, a rich versus a poor country. We'll look at that, and different age groups are going to have different risks of mortality, and then uh, disability or morbidity. And these are diseases that cause you ill effects, but uh, you're not dead. And then acute, when you hear anything you hear about acute, it means rapid, um, not lasting very long issue. And a chronic means it's long-term uh, uh, issue. And then we'll, we'll talk about aging. So causes of death and mortality are well studied uh, in the US, around the world. There's death certificates that you need to put the cause of death. And these can be studied by professionals to see um, where our healthcare should be directed and some preventative measures should be directed and to follow changes in, in causes of death. And you could have a hundred different uh, causes of death that are equally spread out, but no, we have 70% of our deaths in the United States are caused by just these five frequent causes and the rest, there's a whole bunch of rare causes of death, but you see, we're gonna clump a lot of them into heart disease and cancer and, and pulmonary diseases. And of course, this is gonna vary, you're gonna see depending how old you are, what's most likely to be a cause of death. Here we are, let's get right to it. Uh, when you look, if I ask you what's the most frequent cause of death, um, you definitely wanna say uh, heart disease and cancer. And heart disease number one, we're talking uh, about a, uh, something that's actually, cancer is thought to probably gonna overtake heart disease you know, in the next decade or so. But when you look at these two things, uh, you're going to see it's really an impact of age. Um, when you look, if you looked at a uh, different kind of society uh, where you're going to see communicable diseases and diarrheal diseases and things like that would, would, would step up. But if you're going to live a long time, cancer and heart disease are what's going to pop up as being more and more prevalent. So you may say to yourself, why is heart disease and cancer? Why are they increasing so much in this country? Well, if you get rid of uh, communicable diseases and other preventable diseases, these are diseases of old age. And so you're gonna see them rise to the top. Pulmonary diseases, uh, COPD, emphysema, a lot of that's caused by uh, smoking, fits into that category. And then accidents, uh, car accidents, number one issue in the US. In about 50% of those cases, alcohol is involved. So when we talk about, you know, what can we do to prevent deaths? That's uh, one of those things. And then when you see stroke, um, you need to know, we call it a CVA, cerebral vascular accident. And that's gonna be either a bleed, an aneurysm that bursts in your brain, or a clot that's gonna stop up an artery. Either case, your brain is starved for oxygen, for blood, and uh, causes severe issues. Alzheimer's is, is rising, rising as a cause of death, diabetes, pneumonia, kidney disease and suicide. Yeah, so when you look at the US, overall, heart disease, cancer, uh, pulmonary diseases, accidents. What about as a kid? What about as a young kid? And obviously heart disease, some cancer not gonna be up there. Yeah, if you're uh, one to four years old, uh, accidental trauma. Many of these are car accidents and other uh, uh, tragic things that happen early on. 
And then if you're dying that early, young, it's probably maybe a developmental or congenital uh, issue that is gonna kill you early on, right? Homicide, geez, it's terrible. And then, but cancers, issues with the heart, more cancers, yeah. All right, well, important things to know. And looking at worldwide, as you, you guys should know this, you're kind of reinforcing, look at that, cardiovascular cancers up there. Then respiratory issues, dementia, you can see that comes up there. Road injuries. You see HIV AIDS, and this is another time thing. When that first came out in the mid 80s to 90s, that was actually a, a, the top 10 of US deaths, and that's, um, with education, other preventive measures, it's dropped down. And so these things are, are fluid and variable. Malaria, oh my gosh, yeah. Not causing any deaths in the US. When I say that, there's probably a couple people that have traveled elsewhere, but uh, other parts of the world, yeah, it's, it's, it's a major problem that have it in the mosquito population. I'm talking about fluidity. This is just looking at, you know, see a week in April, all of a sudden, you know, this COVID pops in there as being a great cause of death. So um, the disease can pop in and can, can change this like that. Um, yeah. And I find this fascinating looking at this. You can see the, uh, the first column here is the actual causes of death. So you see heart disease, cancer, and then respiratory, and then trauma, they have those about tied there. But the next three columns, look at that. This is gonna be Google searches and then New York Times and The Guardian, a couple, you know, look at the media. And so you can see people are uh, much more uh, worried about, and it's reported looking at, you know, terrorism and, and, and homicide as being a cause of death. It's what you, what you see out there. But the reality is um, terrorism is point. 0.1% of the deaths. So what uh, people, their perceptions of what their danger is in the world and the actual danger are, are way off. Yeah. Um, look at poor heart disease. It's a big killer, but people don't Google it or, or no, we, don't, we don't hear a lot about it. So pretty fascinating. It is one more graphic just to let you take a look at uh, uh, of all these deaths where they come about. So you can see heart disease here, uh, cancers here, respiratory diseases. Those really jump out at you. And then a bunch of more minor causes of death. And then uh, I want to show you one more thing here, looking at uh, even the US differences here in this website, um, looking at uh, age specific mortality. And then look at, you can look at race as well and sex. And this PowerPoint is, is found on um, um, Blackboard. So if you, if you want to look at the PowerPoint and manipulate it and, and click these links on your own, um, that's there for you. So this is really cool when you look at data. Epidemiology is a study of disease over uh, different uh, localities and, and time. See the cause of, cause of, cause of death, fascinating. So looking at this, this is, um, women causes of death with age. See that in the x-axis? So you can see early on, oops, once you reach uh, your teens or maybe your guys' age, you see that um, these diseases like cancer and stuff uh, are less important than external causes. These are accidents and um, things like that. See, that's the main issue in your wild and crazy uh, teens and 20s. And then as you go, as you age, you can see cancer comes up and heart problems, especially as you get really old. And even interestingly, looking at cancer, you can see how it's, um, uh, once you get really old, you're unlikely to, to have a problem there. Yeah. Um, something else is going to kill you. Your heart's going to give out before the cancer. So you can follow these age specific things. Really, really cool. Let's look at men and women. What do you see? I noticed the main difference is that men, external causes, fights. <laughs> um, watch me uh, take this four-wheeler off this homemade ramp kind of thing. You know, how fast can the snowmobile go? These kind of things um, uh, are related to, to men having more external causes than, uh, than internal. And then we can look uh, 
whites versus blacks. And so you see, I see different, especially in, in heart disease, if you look at the purple in the middle here, you can see it shrink and the white versus black population. Yeah. So all these things can be teased apart and health professionals, this is, they'll spend their time um, studying this to help you know, improve health. All right, so risk factors involved, what's gonna kill you? You can see uh, tobacco use. <clears throat> One of the best things you can do to improve your health if you smoke is to stop smoking. Uh, high blood pressure, uh, hypertension, of course, that is going to lead unchecked to uh, heart conditions and strokes, that high blood pressure, definitely. Um, um, atherosclerosis is hardening of the arteries. And that's going to lead to strokes and, and, and heart issues as well. <clears throat> Smoking, of course, leading to all kinds of cancers, not just lung cancer, but bladder cancer, all kinds of things that you don't heal as well. Obesity is going to add to, to hypertension, diabetes, all risk factors for death. So if you look at, you know, how can we prevent mortality? We're looking at uh, physical activity, being healthier, diet, and not smoking are way, way up there. And looking worldwide, besides you see blood pressure, tobacco, um, things like unsafe sex and alcohol uh, and drug use are going to be risk factors to, to mortality, right? Fruit and vegetable intake, look at that. Um, and I see a lot of deficiencies of iron and zinc and vitamin A too. So oh, this disability or morbidity um, is going to um, uh, be harder to measure than mortality. I mean, a person's dead, they're dead. I mean, you know, there's very little uh, issue there. There's occasional mistakes, but you know, when a person, uh, mortality, easy to, to, to measure, but uh, morbidity, how do, you, how do you measure that in a population? Um, and you can look at doctor's visits. We'll take a look at that and to see what, besides, you know, death, what causes people healthcare issues. But that's a, probabil that's a problem also because you have different populations seeking uh, to visit their doctor differently if they have healthcare or not. Um, and so some people have different pain tolerances and then some will go to the doctor and some won't. Um, so it's much harder to get a hand on morbidity compared to mortality. But we can look at office visits to a physician. Um, and the first one isn't even a problem, usually. It's a uh, uh, number one reason that people visit a physician is to bring their kid in to see, uh, they talk about uh, health and diet, uh, feeding and uh, immunizations. And so that's not really useful to look at uh, morbidity. Uh, people get their blood pressure checked, hypertension. You guys probably know acute upper respiratory infections, colds, flu, people come in for that. Um, arthritis, diabetes, back issues, other spinal issues, mostly back. Yeah, if you want to have a baby, this is um, you know, ear infection, maybe you get tubes in your ear, your gyno exam or follow-up exam. Yeah. So how helpful is this? And these are office visits. Um, some of it doesn't really, it's not directly related to morbidity. It's, it's related, but not, it's not a, a great fit right there. And again, this just shows you mortality, deaths, morbidity, illness. <clears throat> and uh, a big issue, of course, in using, uh, uh, looking at morbidity really is um, uh, when you see people in poor, rural areas or inner city areas, if you don't have insurance, much less likely to, um, uh, to go to the doctor. Obviously, you wait till something's very serious. And really, I, I guess I need to just point that out, the obvious, I think you guys are all realize this, but um, healthcare in the US is a for-profit. Um, it's very different than the rest of the world, right? You go to Canada, you go to UK, you go to Sweden. Um, the poor and the rich don't have a huge difference in their healthcare, right? Um, and it's expensive to be poor. I put that down there. It's, um, if you 
have health care. And I sit here, I, I have every six months, I go to the dentist and get my teeth checked. Every year I have a physical, I get my flu shot through UNE every year, colonoscopy, mammograms, all these things, if, if you have the ability to get them, are going to be preventative and stop you from having morbidity and mortality. And if not, if you don't have the access to those, you end up going to the ER when you've got signs when your cancer is advanced or uh, you know you you don't have any of these screenings and, and then at that point um it's often too late you know your prognosis is not great and it's much more expensive at that point and you know if, if you you can't afford it it's gonna your credit rating is gone and uh maybe in bankruptcy and so it's we'll talk about poverty i mean just a couple of slides poverty and health uh it's really a vicious cycle and uh, for the haves that have an insurance in a, in a good society where that's available, um, your lifespan is much greater and your overall health is greater. And that leads loops back into your, uh, your quality of life and having money and being able to live a happy life. This is a healthcare debate going on in politics and you're all very aware of it, I'm sure. And here, looking at that, that, I want you to understand that cycle and people say, well, the poor, you know, if they took better care of themselves, it's, 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 you know, it's their, cho it's their choice. I, I don't even want to talk about it because it just makes me angry, but um, uh, the poor, you're looking at other parts of the world, you don't have um, good sanitation, you don't have access to clean water, it means you have more illness and illness is going to lead to not being able to work and, uh, putting your family at uh, even poor and, and nutrition too. If you look at, and I think even in the US, if you live in an inner city, um, you don't have the farmer's market. You go to the grocery store, there's really poor quality nutrition. Um, in the US, there's, it's great cities. Um, and that's gonna um, lead to diabetes, obesity, and poor, poor health outcomes there. And so, yeah, you can look at this, this, this cycle. Um, and again, harsh reality that if, if you're very poor, you will take jobs that put your health at risk, right? You'll take a job without insurance because right? you need the money. You'll work at a uh, toxic waste field. If, you, if that's, you know, your, your, your choices are that are not putting food on the table for your family. And so that also puts the, uh, the, the poor at a greater risk of uh, morbidity and mortality. And not to mention climate change, conflict. We look the world over and look at the health. You can see those do not help at all. Uh, this I just found this looking at healthcare. You know, looking at uh, in, in the U.S. And, and I thought, look at Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire. The white means are at the top percentage looking at healthcare. I'm not sure the measure they used for this. And the bottom part of healthcare, you know, we're seeing a lot of places in the in the South here. Just teaching about reproductive and AMP and Louisiana, number one in STIs. I don't know why, but uh, looking at that, if you look at uh, uh, Mississippi and Alabama, looking at percentage of uninsured and healthcare, uh, obesity, diabetes rates, smoking rates, um, you know, our country is not uniform. We have differences. These are the amount of un uninsured people. And so it's in the dark purple. Um, so you can see, man, this is 2015. So a lot of this is political, depending on where your priorities are. Um, and so uh, look at Vermont, New Hampshire, New York, nice. And Missouri, look at that. Uninsured in neighboring Iowa and Illinois. Uh, very few uninsured. So this has to do with politics right here. And um, what's the priority in terms of uh, people being uninsured? All right, so again, morbidity and disability, looking at people that have issues with disease. And this can be mental, it can be uh, physical, it can be after a stroke, you're not able to work. All these are causes of, of disability. And looking at adults in the US, yeah, back issues, arthritis, heart issues. And of course, mental health is, is really big. And deafness and blindness, of course, disabilities that can be 
It can be congenital, born to them or it can be acquired during your lifetime. So yeah, these are big causes of disability. Surviving a heart attack or a stroke or back arthritis issues that keep you from living a normal life. Healthy life, I should say. And so what's the purpose of all this study of morbidity and mortality? Well, we can look at you know, where we should put our nurses, where we should put our healthcare dollars um, uh, to help increase the overall health of, of uh, the nation or whatever population you're talking about. And an important thing you should know here is uh, direct versus indirect costs. So the direct cause of a direct cost of morbi uh, morbidity would be what you're spending on surgeries and drugs. These are things you know directly involved with the healthcare. But the indirect cost is going to include things like loss of wages, loss of work, and uh, um, disability payments, uh, things like that. So the cost on the family. Um, so the direct cost is when we look at dollars and cents going to treating that disease. And some diseases looking at you know, pharmaceuticals, there are um, cholesterol low lowering medications, diabetes medications, blood pressure medications, very cheap. And you look at chemo, some of those drugs are incredibly expensive. So different diseases are, do not equal the same amount of uh, um, costs, uh, definitely. So some terminology, frequency of disease, that is going to be, you have to define what population you're talking about and what time frame you're talking about. You're talking about a frequency of the disease. And I found this example here looking at, just looking at the flu over different months, and you can see the frequency of disease uh, peaks here in, uh, in the winter and early spring. It goes away in the summer. Uh, incidence and prevalence. Um, so these, again, are different um, um, measures that you need to know what they mean. Uh, the incidence is how many uh, new diagnosis of this disease happens. Um, prevalence is how prevalent or how many people in a population have this. Now, incidence only counts if you get it in a certain time frame. But prevalence just means how many people at a certain time have it. They may have gotten it years ago and they've been living with it. And so uh, below here, looking at HIV, you can see that uh, the red line here is gonna show you um, how many people have it in a given time. And the blue line is gonna show you how many new cases. So you can see that we're, we've been better at lowering how many people have it, but you live with it. And so it's always gonna be cumulative. So the people, the prevalence in the population will always be everyone that has it. <clears throat> the incidence is how many people got it during that time frame. And so when we look at diseases, um, acute illnesses, we usually look at the incidence. How many times does it happen? Like you don't look at the prevalence of bone breaks, like how many people have a bone break. You see how many people break their bones in a certain period of time or get a cold and they get over it. Uh, prevalence is gonna be chronic illnesses. Like what's the prevalence of diabetes or Alzheimer's? Um, it's something you get and you, you have over a period of time. And so you look at that uh, for prevalence for chronic diseases. Mortality rates, how many people die in a given time period. Survival rates, um, you look at a given time after diagnosis, what's your survival rate? So if you look at pancreatic cancer, it could be very short versus a prostate cancer, your survival rate is much greater. It's also age dependent. And when someone gives you your prognosis, they're looking at that. What is going to be your survival rate? What is going to be your, uh, after getting a disease or an illness, um, what is going to be the average course? What's your life going to be like after that? How long can you expect to live? And this is all done through data gathering. So anyone that has pancreatic cancer, they can look at thousands and thousands of cases of other people in your situation and, and give you information to help you plan your life. And I just throw a, uh, looking at brain cancer survival rates, um, depending on your age. And so you can see that if you are over 71 and you're diagnosed with brain cancer in one year, you know, your survival rates can be less than 20%. And then if you look at someone in the black line, and after one year, you can see 70 some percent of people a year out from a brain cancer diagnosis. If you're young, that's your survival rate. So just 
giving you guys these things so you're just used to using these terms so you should know prevalence, incidence, survival rate, mortality rate. So acute diseases are things that come on quickly and they go away quickly. Acute pain is when you step on a nail. Chronic pain is maybe cancer pain or bone pain that lasts a long time. So what are acute illnesses? When you look at it, you can see respiratory, colds, flus, they, they're acute, they come and they go. And then injuries, usually you're injured, you have acute pain or problems and then they will heal and they don't last the rest of your life. And as you get older, as you get older and older, acute illnesses give way to more chronic issues. And I throw this in here, I want you guys to think about this. Um, it's not, not in the book right exactly, but um, you wonder why do old people get more and more diseases show up, especially genetic diseases, uh, Huntington's, things like that that show up later in life. Um, and it turns out, I want you to think about this, is that once you've had your children, so once you're an older age, for women, your 40s and 50s and, and beyond, then genetic diseases can pop up and kill you or cause issues because there's no real evolutionary selection for them. Because once you find out you have that disease, you've already had your children, your childbearing years are behind you and they've, they've, you've passed on those genes. So it's really interesting looking at genetic diseases is that um, there are strong selective pressure against them if they show up when you're young. When you're young, childbearing or before, if you have a genetic disease, you're not going to leave that to your children. Um, but if they show up later in life, there's no selective pressure. A little bit, because if you're older as a grandmother, you can help raise the kids. But the direct fitness, your direct fitness, um, once you've had your kids, when you're older, evolutionarily, you don't matter as much because you've already passed on your genes. So I mean, I hate to say it coldly like that, but uh, we'll see a lot of things pop up in old age, a lot of diseases because there's strong selective pressure against people that have early onset diseases in childbearing years and before, because though they won't leave their genes, they won't pass them on. But it's too late if you show genetic disease after childbearing age, you've already passed those on, there's no pressure against those. So interesting to think about. So chronic diseases, they come about uh, as you get older. And you can see looking at, you know, what causes more strain on our healthcare? Is it acute diseases like uh, colds and broken bones and accidents, or is it chronic diseases? You can see clearly um, chronic diseases take up uh, most of our mortality, most of our healthcare costs. What are some of these? Uh, periodontal disease, this is gonna be, uh, uh, yeah, around your tooth, the gum issues, receding gums, loss of teeth. Um, and it's very, very common as you get older, but you know, people sometimes not complain about it. You can live with very poor teeth, um, but that's a big one. Uh, uh, mental diseases. And then uh, we'll talk about this, but as you get older, um, uh, your eyesight gets worse, <clears throat> back issues, arthritis, all these things you're going to see are related to age. Yeah, interesting, asthma and chronic bronchitis. You can read it for yourself. So look at life expectancy. Um, of course, it has improved and it's very high in, in more developed nations that have better health care, better sanitation, uh, et cetera. So you can look at this. Um, you can see back in 1900, you could expect to live less than 50 years. And uh, look at today, it's, it's pushing 80 years would be your average life expectancy. What's this dip? Kind of related to where we are today. This is gonna be the, the flu pandemic in 1918. You can see it killed millions of people. We should see World Wars II, let's see. Uh, World War II, World War I, a little dip. Before that, the plague would show a big dip, <clears throat> but uh, yeah. And looking the world over at life expectancies, again, dark purple and blue is the greatest life expectancy. So you can see Canadians got us beat. 
Western Europeans have as beats, Nordic countries, Australia, Japan, New Zealand have a greater life expectancy than the United States. Yeah. And some of the lowest life expectancies, you can see countries uh, in Africa and uh, like at Middle East and New Guinea, um, where there's issues there with life expectancy, mostly with preventable diseases and, and countries that have more uh, money to, to go towards healthcare. Oh, men and women, I think this is fascinating. You, you go to an old folks home and you see a lot more old women than old men. Women live longer. Why? <laughs> How it comes to my mind is the whole, you know, men take their jet skis and uh, just do some dumb things. They get in fights, uh, physical fights, uh, et cetera, like more guns. Um, um, Indeed. Uh, but women uh, generally have more, when you look at how many years of health, they, they live significantly more than, than men. We don't know why exactly, but some hypotheses are here. Men tend to drink, smoke, more obesity. Men are more less likely to seek medical attention and they're less adherent to their medications and to doing what they're supposed to do and riskier behaviors. And um, we believe some of this related to testosterone. Um, there's been a study, eunuchs are when you've been castrated, you have less testosterone. And one study I think in Korea found that they lived 14 years longer. Um, so yeah, less riskier behaviors um, is generally it. Um, yeah. So. So aging, is it a disease? Is it a progressive irreversible disease? Well, yes, but there is no cure for it. Uh, the one thing that has been found to prolong life has been calorie deprivation. There's people that live on very few calories. And, well, it works in mice. You, you get a group of mice that you let them to feed ad libitum, they can have as much food as they want. And you give a group where you give them a certain amount of calories and uh, that group always lived longer. Um, uh, yeah, but aging is uh, something that uh, we can't stop. Um, we're living much longer. And the reason why is not, you know, why do we live longer than you know, we did in the middle ages? It's not because of heart valves and uh, kidney transplants and fancy, uh, um, uh, to, uh, machines. It has to do with preventing things that used to kill you when you were young. Um, vaccines, um, clean drinking water, sanitation. That's what really increases our how long we live. But living longer means there's more people going to suffer from those chronic diseases. I mean, cancer will never go away. It's your, it's your cells that have lived for so long are going to accumulate errors and mistakes and uh, normally something else will kill you but if you keep living longer these things are going to catch up to you so aging begins um you know puberty and then it's, it's all downhill <laughs> i don't mean that um, but uh, uh and then as you get older your chance of dying just shoots up uh, in our society in humans Mm -hmm. If you look here, looking at um, death rates, um, um, yeah, and then they, they blew up this area here, they blew up this area, so you can see it. So you can see when you're very young, you have a chance of dying. When you're a baby, early on in those years, there's um, congenital things, uh, genetic issues that you could die. But once you make it to a year old, and a year to, to, till you're 10 or 14, there's very little chance you're going to die very little chance. And that'll go up a little bit in the teens. A lot of that is uh, behavioral. And then, uh, you know, you should live, great chance of living, you guys, all the way into your, your 50s and so. Little chance you're going to die. It obviously goes up a little bit. But then it goes up very rapidly in old age. And so once you're in your 70s, 80s, then your chance of dying is going to really increase every year. But humans in that whole middle age from you guys are 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, there's little chance, you have a high chance of survival. 
And this, um, looking at one more time, looking at the difference between the 1920s, the 60s, and today, what we see, if you look at the blue line, you can see the blue line is quite high. You had a much greater chance of dying through these times where I said you have little chance of dying. And then as the, our health gets better and better, our health system, you can see the peaks happen uh, in old age. You're more likely to die here than to die young. So when you talk about aging, it's pretty fascinating, actually. Why do we age? Um, why can a turtle or a shark live hundreds of years and then a hamster is going to live a couple of years to so five years at the most? Um, there are several things involved here. Your cells obviously are going to be less likely to fix mistakes. Every time they divide, your DNA has these telomeres at the end. They get shorter and shorter. After they've divided, you do it in a culture 50 or sometimes, it starts breaking off pieces of that valuable DNA. So we kind of have a clock, uh, a genetic clock um, for how long we can live. And plus our cells accumulate um, 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 waste products that we can't get rid of, um, mutations ratchet up, they become successive. And so we end up aging and then, you know, the physical manifestation Manifestations such as seeing uh, skin changes and you know, kidney function and heart function, those, um, those all build up as well. But there's no simple explanation. Why do we die? Why do we age? So we have age dependent diseases. And these just are dependent on age. As you get older, you're going to have these things happen to you. Um, presbyopia is. Uh, when your changes in the flexibility of your lens and all of a sudden you start reading the paper further and further away because your lens isn't as flexible. Um, endocrine changes, changes in your hormones, which are gonna relate to osteoporosis. Um, again, not everyone is gonna die of these things, but they're just all individuals um, uh, show uh, um, changes in the joints, changes in your bones, changes in flexibility of your lens, changes in your skin. These are age dependent. Age-related diseases mean it's more likely as you get older, but not everyone is going to get this. So um, cancer, you know, increases greatly as you get older, but some people don't get the cancer. Um, yeah, these keratosis is looking at age spots that uh, um, indeed uh, atherosclerosis, high blood pressure, Alzheimer's. Uh, age is definitely a uh, contributing factor but it's not, doesn't mean you're dependent, you're going to get these things. All right, I believe this is the last slide. Um, so with aging, I mentioned the skin, it really it shows your hair and your skin. Um, your immune system doesn't work as well as it used to. Your thymus is gonna regress. Your B cells and T cells, they're not gonna recognize cancerous cells, making it more likely for cancer to spread. Um, Diabetes, your gluco, your insulin receptors get tired after 100 years of working. Um, neuronal loss, your brain shrinks, especially the gray matter with, with age. Um, it doesn't mean that all old people get um, dementia, but um, there's going to be a loss of gray matter in, in, in all people. And some people show market effects and some don't. Um, uh, muscle strength is going to go down. You get a greater percentage of fat, less muscle, uh, more likely to have osteoporosis. The skin shows a lot of changes. Um, your keratin, the connective tissue in your body, just becomes less flexible. Bone, cartilage becomes bone. So people's ribs, you give an old person CPR, you're often breaking ribs because that cartilage in you guys is, at your age, is going to turn into bone. And digestive uh, issues as well, diverticulitis and other, other uh, issues come about with age. So there's not a lot of good news with aging. You get more wisdom, that's about all you get. Otherwise, each system just shows these uh, progressive issues. All right, so hope you enjoyed this. Uh, very interesting looking at uh, what causes mortality and morbidity? And um, I want you to know the major causes of uh, death and morbidity um, uh, and things to, that you're going to look out for in practice are going to be the most common causes. And these are things, of course, the healthcare professionals kind of zero in on. Now, how can we prevent?
these most common uh, causes of, uh, of health issues. All right, and some vocabulary there for you to learn as well. Until next time.